also. Today's verdict in the trial of Officer Michael Brillo is a verdict that will have long-lasting effect, not only here in our local community, but really in communities throughout this country. It is the first of several complex policing and community issues that will test Clevelanders as we move in the days, the weeks, and the months ahead. Um, this is a moment that will define us as a city and define us as a people as we move forward and address not only the issues surrounding this verdict, but those that, things that will be coming in the near future. It is my expectation that we will show the nation that peaceful demonstration and dialogue is the right direction as we move forward as one Cleveland. We all understand and respect the fact that people have a right to protest and to let their voice be heard. However, while we encourage and support peaceful protests, I want to make sure that those who are here that have a different agenda understand that actions that cross the line, whether by police officers or citizens, cannot and will not be tolerated. Moving forward, we will continue to address the events of November 29th, 2012, which is the East Cleveland shooting, of which Officer Brillo was on trial today. Now that the criminal court case has been concluded, the disciplinary process will resume for the remaining 14 officers that were involved either in the chase or the shooting. To date, we have disciplined officers in a range from termination, demotion, and suspension without pay. In addition, there will be rulings in, on the Tamir Rice case and the Denisha Anderson case in the future. At the same time, the city is in continuing negotiation with the Department of Justice to reach a consent decree to ensure that there is greater accountability and transparency in the Division of Police. While we have accomplished a great deal as a community, we know that there is much, much, much more that we have to do. Again, I want to emphasize that this is a defining moment for Cleveland. As we look at this verdict and we respond to that verdict, and we as a city move ahead in a way that will ensure that whatever is the injustices may be will no longer happen again. So I want to turn this over to Chief Calvin Williams, who will go through the process of what we will do post this verdict in terms of police action around disciplinary actions. Chief. Today's announcement and the verdict of Patrol Officer Michael Brillo uh, marks a defining time for the city and for this police department. It is important to note that we still have a lot of hard work to do regarding the events that took place on November 29, 2012. I will explain the steps uh, that we are going to take to move forward here. But first, I want to recap what's already been the actions that have already been taken by both the city and the Division of Police. In 2013, the Division of Police convened a critical incident review committee to look over the incident on November 29th of 2012. This critical incident review committee is comprised of members of the Homicide Unit, the Use of Deadly Force Investigation Team, the Integrity Control Section, the field operations section, as well as three civilians, one from the Office of Professional Standards, one from the Community Relations Board, and one community liaison, along with a member of the city's law department. The committee was tasked with reviewing the completed BCI and I investigation that was conducted in this incident and also to conduct their own independent investigation. All records and electronic data were reviewed 
police supervisors and officers involved in the pursuit were questioned. The route of the pursuit was driven several times by the committee members to ensure and determine the accuracy of the officer's statements. Upon completion of the committee's investigation, the results and recommendations were forwarded to the Chief of Police. In the interest of transparency and openness to our community, the Division of Police conducted a press conference at which time a PowerPoint presentation was given that put all the evidence that the committee reviewed and the conclusions out there for everybody. This review in 2013 focused solely on the officers that were involved in the pursuit and not the officers involved in the use of deadly force. That investigation resulted in the following. 72 officers were suspended without pay with dates ranging from one day to 30 days. One supervisor was terminated and two supervisors were demoted. Three officers had administrative charges dismissed due to no finding by the committee of administrative violations or procedures. The administrative process now surrounding Officer Brillo and the 12 other officers involved in the use of deadly force will continue with the Critical Incident Review Committee. Regarding Officer Brillo, Officer Brillo will remain on unpaid suspension from the Division of Police. Upon completion of the Critical Incident Committee's review, their findings will be forwarded to my office where I will review those findings and submit them to our case preparation officer to prepare administrative charges for violations observed by that committee. The case preparation officer will notify the officers involved in writing of those charges and hearing dates will be set either with myself or the director of public safety for those officers. As stated earlier, this is another step in a long process to move us forward through this incident on November 29th of 2012. The people of this city can be assured that we, the administration and the division of police, will make sure that any and all violations of our policies and procedures are dealt with to the fullest extent possible. The citizens of this city have set a standard over the last six months in how they interact and force change and the reform of not only the Cleveland Division of Police but of the criminal justice system. And I have been proud to be a Clevelander during that time because our people have come out and demonstrated and voiced their concerns and their First Amendment rights in a peaceful, proactive fashion. And we've listened to that. And I want to make sure that people understand that the way we get this thing done is together as a city in the fashion that we've done over the last six months. This is not over. There are still things that the Division of Police in the city are in the process of doing to make sure that our community knows that we are here to protect and to serve them. I want to make sure that people understand that we are out there for our community and that our officers are a part of this community. And day in and day out, we go out there to protect and serve. And our community has that right to go out there and, and, and voice their concerns, and we've done that. And we expect people to continue to do that. At this time, calmer heads have to prevail. Cleveland has set a standard and I want to ensure that we continue to set that standard as we move forward. Thank you. All right, any questions? Yes, sir. Well, I, I think I've been on record. I've even said to you personally and, and on the record that uh, it was my belief that at the end of the day, uh, that, uh, as you know, when we discipline officers, the arbitrators overturn those disciplines, and that I felt that the charge that was um, 
uh, presented uh, to the judge was one that was difficult to prove. And so my expectation, uh, I think, with a lot of people is that it would be a very difficult appeal battle to get a conviction. And, and that has borne out. Now, uh, my personal reaction to it is that it, it is difficult to, um, uh, to accept just a legal definition or a legal uh, analysis of something and say that that should be the end of it. Because I don't believe people will accept that. Uh, people uh, have a right to disagree with me as mayor, the chief as the chief, the judge as the judge, and the criminal justice system as the criminal justice system. And that we uh, fully expect that they will express their dissatisfaction, and we're asking them to do it in the way that they've done it in the past, and our expectation is that they will do that. And, and with all of this said and done, um, having their feet on the pedal in terms of constantly reminding the administration, the police department, and the court in this country as a whole that there's expectation that they believe that we, in terms of government and in terms of the criminal justice system, have not met and that this decision is one of those um, shortcomings in terms of expectation. And that is what they're saying to me, the chief, and they're saying to the criminal justice center. And they're saying not just in Cleveland, they're saying it all over the country. Well, I'm not going to, I'm the mayor, so I will maintain a mayoral posture in regards to uh, whether or not I'm disappointed or not. I think I've pretty well explained my sentiments and you can interpret that. Uh, first off, uh, we, we monitor activity uh, on a daily basis. Um, yes, there are people um, from outside of our area that are in town uh, just for the purpose of engaging in what we uh, hope will be peaceful First Amendment uh, activities. Uh, but we really uh, aren't too focused on the people that come in from out of town. Uh, we're focused on the people in this city uh, that have to live here day in and day out and that know what needs to happen in this city. And the people that live here, our activists, our community partners, they know what needs to happen. And those are the people that we're listening to. Those are the people that we're talking to and engaging with. Uh, if there's somebody from out of town that doesn't have that uh, as their focus for the city of Cleveland, uh, you know, I, we're not going to um, single them out, uh, but we're going to engage and talk to and make sure that the people in the city uh, that live here, that have a stake here, have a voice in what goes on from here on out. Well, we're not going to get into tactics and deployment and things like that. Uh, I mean, that's a hypothetical situation at this point. Uh, but we're out there to maintain peace in this community. Uh, we're out there to pre protect everybody in this community, uh, both physically and, and property-wise, and we will do that. Uh, again, I'm not going to comment on what the verdict says. Uh, I mean, people can make their own uh, opinions on that. Uh, all I can say is that um, uh, from the division standpoint, we still have work to do, and the people uh, in this city will know where the division stands, where I stand, once we complete that work with the rest of the officers. Well, I'm, I'm not going to go back to that. I mean, the people that were at the press conference that we had the night after, uh, they know my feelings. They know uh, the things that I said that night. He wasn't there. Well, in a nutshell, um, my statements that night were along the lines of, um, you know, we're a better police department uh, than to allow uh, not just the end of this incident, but to allow the incident to get that far in the first place. And that's what I've worked for since November 12, November uh, 29th of 2012 uh, to correct in this division. 
And, and as people will know, uh, we haven't had a pursuit that's lasted that long. We haven't had a pursuit that's resulted in anything close to that since because of the things that we put in place since that day. Well, I think there are a lot of things different. Uh, again, uh, we don't conduct pursuits in that manner anymore, and we haven't since that day. And it's evident by, uh, I mean, you guys can look at the stats that, uh, you know, it's just not the policy of our police department anymore to allow anything like that to even take hold, uh, let alone to go on for that duration. Uh, that, along with our community engagement, you, know, you see a lot of our community partners here today, um, but what I'm here to tell people is that I'm here for the long haul. I know the mayor is here for the long haul. And we want what's best for this community, this entire community. Uh, not just what's best for the police department, because what's best for the Cleveland Division of Police is to police our city in a way that everybody is confident in us. And that, that's my goal from the beginning. Yes, sir. Well, I've, I've had um, conversation with the governor, yes. Uh, that type of topic did come up, but it just came up and went away. It wasn't like we spent time on it. I mean, it's a logical kind of question that he asked me. Uh, the real thing is with the chief of police, the highway patrol, uh, the uh, different police uh, departments in the area, the county sheriff. So he has had ex extensive dialogue with them, and they have uh, had protocol established between them and um, uh, and also some training kind of things going on between the division and the police, suburban police, the sheriff's office, the state highway patrol. Uh, fortunately, we've always had a good working relationship with them and have done things in the past in a joint partnership with them, so it's not difficult to adjust to if there's a need for adjustment in an incident like this. You think they would tell you that? No, no, no. We, we, the police are the police, and, and you know, and of course they, they gather intelligence. Uh, there are things that they don't tell me. Uh, so I'm, I imagine they wouldn't today be telling you something like that. But, but, uh, but they stay on top of it. Is what I'm saying. They, they do stay on top of what they do, and they, and they do it in a professional way. Yes. Uh, Scott, it depends on the situation. Uh, right now, uh, I'm allowing my uh, command staff and supervisors to do their jobs, what they've been trained to do, along with our other uh, law enforcement partners. Uh, so now, no, right now I'm not on the streets. Uh, but if it came to it, if I thought it helped, would help a situation, uh, I, I'd definitely be out there. I, I mean, you know, uh, you know, I'm a frontline supervisor, police officer for almost 30 years. That's where I've been. And uh, again, if the situation dictates it, of course I would. Oh, but I, I, Scott, I don't want you to think that the chief is not. He's the chief, so he's in the command. Um, uh, mode now, and so he's uh, operating out of the, our emergency operations center where all information comes in, all the intelligence that may be gathered, all of the uh, real-time things that are happening on the street. So he is in uh, that command position now, and, and if something happened where it need be, both he and I would respond to it at that time. But right now there are people who are responsible for those things, but he is in charge operating out of the emergency operations center. Thank you very much. Thank you.